you can see what's going on here. The temperature in the greenhouse is around 18 degrees Celsius. We've installed sensors at the beginning, middle, and end to monitor the temperature. The soil temperature is currently 16.9 degrees Celsius. These three beds have a heat capacity 100 times greater than the air in the greenhouse. As soon as the temperature drops below 18 degrees, the boiler will automatically turn on. We're using the most efficient LEDs available, with a light output of 8100 lumens per watt. We measure the light intensity in locks. The air circulation is excellent. It's drawn in, circulated, and then reintroduced into the system. We monitor the temperature at the beginning, middle, and end of the greenhouse. Good day, my name is Alexander. Today I'd like to introduce you to another one of our greenhouse constructions. Previously, we had a greenhouse located in an urban area, but now we've ventured into a more natural setting. Surrounded by pine trees, this picturesque location is home to our latest greenhouse. Measuring 6 by 40 meters, it's covered with a double layer of film and equipped with fence at the bottom. As you can see, everything is frozen solid. We've insulated it well, but every two meters, we have vents for summer ventilation. Unfortunately, they're frozen now. We've added insulation to ensure a tight seal. It's a great example of symbiosis. Look at this, everything is frozen. It's quite a frost outside. We've installed polycarbonate panels along the entire length, with vents embedded for easy opening year-round. One disadvantage of side ventilation is that the entire length needs to be unsealed and then resealed. With individual vents, you can partially open them for ventilation, which is convenient even in winter. For instance, if it gets too warm in February, you can open a couple of vents. That's the advantage of this design. Let's go inside. We have heating, lighting, and irrigation systems here. We'll discuss the irrigation system in more detail because it has some interesting features. In this greenhouse, we have a forced air heating system. Since it's quite noisy in the vestibule, let's discuss the heating system here. We've installed pipes around the perimeter of the greenhouse and use valves to regulate the temperature. We have sensors at the beginning, middle, and end to monitor the temperature. If we notice a lower temperature in any area, we simply adjust the valves to direct more hot air there. Currently, the front section is mostly closed, while the back section receives maximum heat. The warm air heats the gas blocks, reaching temperatures of 39-40 degrees Celsius. The gentle heat of around 45 degrees Celsius is warming up the greenhouse. It's only been running for about two hours, and the greenhouse is already at 18 degrees Celsius. By adjusting the valves, we can precisely control the temperature in different areas. We can make it warmer here and cooler there. Once the system is set up, it operates automatically. We monitor the temperature using sensors, and I'll show you the control panel in the vestibule later. By the way, the soil temperature is currently 16.9 degrees Celsius. It's heating up quite nicely. The forced air heating system complements the soil's heat storage capacity very well. I'll explain the soil heat storage system in more detail later. Actually, I have a video where I discuss the theoretical aspects of this system. And here, closer to the heat storage units, the temperature is already 20 degrees Celsius, even though we've turned them off. This demonstrates how well the system works. Our system works like this, when the temperature rises above 25 degrees Celsius, these fans turn on. They draw the hot air from the axial fans over there and push it into these duct fans, which then force the hot air into the ground. The heat capacity of these three beds is 100 times greater than the heat capacity of all the air in the greenhouse. That's why we designed the system to circulate 6-8 times the volume of air per hour. We do this for 12 hours a day, 
accumulating a massive amount of heat energy around 150-200 kilowatts in the ground. This heat is then released during the night or when the heating system is off. The advantage of this system is that it acts as a buffer for the water heating system. Excess heat can be stored in the ground, preventing heat loss. The hot air rises in the greenhouse but is forced down by the axial and duct fans, storing the excess heat in the ground. The ground then gradually releases this heat back into the greenhouse. This system can save us around 25-30% on firewood by naturally storing excess heat from the boiler. The boiler has turned off because the greenhouse has reached 21 degrees Celsius. There's no need to heat it further. The boiler will turn on again when the temperature drops below 18 degrees Celsius. We've installed an LED lighting system using Nikia diodes, which are known for their high light output efficiency. They produce 150-180 lumens per watt, significantly higher than the 8100 lumens per watt of typical LED lights. These 100 watt lights with 100 lumens per watt are already considered high performance, but our lights are even better. The specific output depends on the drivers and optics, but we're getting between 150 and 180 lumens per watt. We've chosen warm white diodes with a color temperature of 3000 Kelvin, which is ideal for growing tomatoes and cucumbers. Since these plants require more red light than blue, we've adjusted the spectral distribution accordingly. For our 240 square meter greenhouse, we're using 14, 200 watt LED lights, which is a total of 2.8 kilowatts. We've measured the light intensity at 6,000 lux, which is excellent for tomatoes and cucumbers. So, we're using just 2.8 kilowatts to illuminate a 240 square meter area. The lights are divided into groups, so we can turn off sections as needed. We've turned on the fans to circulate the hot air into the ground. The axial fans push the air towards the center, ensuring good air circulation. The hot air is then drawn out from under the pipes. This constant air movement prevents stagnation and helps to maintain a consistent temperature. The upper fans recirculate the air if it gets too hot, minimizing heat loss through the greenhouse roof. In essence, we're capturing and reusing the heat, improving the overall efficiency of the heating system. Instead of heating the upper part of the greenhouse, we're directing the hot air back into the ground for storage. We're now in the boiler room, which also serves as a vestibule. It's quite warm here, but when the fan turns on, it draws the hot air and distributes it throughout the system. I've only turned on the lower fan, and the forced air system is currently off. The lighting is controlled by a timer and can also be operated manually. The system is divided into three zones. These sensors measure the temperature at the beginning, middle, and end of the greenhouse, as well as the soil temperature. We can monitor all these readings and adjust the temperature as needed. This control activates the heat storage when the temperature rises above 20 degrees Celsius, transferring excess heat to the ground. These fans force the air circulation. If we set the temperature to 22 degrees Celsius, for example, the fans will start pushing the air towards the center of the greenhouse. This is the boiler control system. It currently operates in natural mode, but if the temperature drops significantly, the fan and turbine will activate to increase the airflow and heat output. The most efficient combustion occurs when the wood burns slowly in the air chamber. Our boiler can easily maintain the greenhouse temperature down to 10 or 15 degrees Celsius without the turbine, relying solely on natural draft. If the temperature drops below 20 degrees Celsius, we can activate the turbine to accelerate the combustion process and generate more heat. The fan operates in an intermittent mode, turning on and off periodically. It can also operate continuously if the temperature drops below a certain threshold. The turbine works similarly. The system is easy to use and highly efficient for both lighting and heating. 
Many people ask why we use plastic pipes for heat storage. Let's talk about the plastic pipes. Compared to galvanized pipes, they have better thermal insulation. This means that heat is distributed more evenly throughout the greenhouse. For example, if we measure the temperature, we'll see that while the center of the greenhouse is at 21 degrees Celsius and the soil at 20 degrees, the temperature at the edges is only 16 degrees. This is because the heat is lost more quickly at the ends of the greenhouse, especially if we were using galvanized pipes. To compensate for this, we open the valves at the ends to increase the heat flow. The goal is to maintain a consistent temperature throughout the greenhouse. The forced air heating system helps to warm up the edges, ensuring even heat distribution. The area closer to the boiler is naturally warmer. We've installed a partition to prevent smoke from entering the greenhouse, while allowing for airflow. Of course, a greenhouse can't function without proper irrigation. We use drip irrigation, and the water tank is located near the boiler to ensure a warm water supply. Each bed has its own automatic irrigation system. This greenhouse is designed for maximum efficiency and convenience. We can precisely control the temperature and lighting, and we can store excess heat in the ground. I hope you found this information about the greenhouse design helpful. You can build a similar greenhouse yourself or purchase a ready-made kit. We welcome your comments and likes. Stay in harmony with nature and keep up with the latest technology. This is Alexander from Eco Greenhouse. Until next time.